Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Presbyterian Church in Greenville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, June the 14th, and we are glad that you are joining us from wherever you might be this day. And I want to remind you, uh, as we worship together today, we are going to be celebrating the Sacrament of Communion. So we invite you, if you haven't already, uh, to get some bread, get some juice, join us as we celebrate uh, this sacrament this morning. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, for your love and your mercy that overflows in our lives, for your grace that continues to come day after day, moment after moment, we pause and we praise you for the opportunities to gather wherever we might be, in our homes, traveling, even for those that are here. We praise you this day. For we know that you are present with us, and we, we know that you seek to reach out and connect with us as we participate during this time. So we pray your blessing upon it, and ask that all that we do might bring you honor and glory. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join us this morning as we sing together hymn number 49, The God of Abraham Prays. <laughs> It is the writer of 1 John who says, If we claim that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Believing the promise of Scripture, let us dare to join hearts and voices together, praying the unison prayer of confession. Let us pray. Holy, Holy and, and merciful, merciful God, 
In your presence, we confess our sinfulness, our shortcomings, and our offenses against you. You alone know how often we have sinned in wandering from your ways, in wasting your gifts, in forgetting your love. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we are ashamed and sorry for all we have done to displease you. Forgive our sins and help us to live in your light and walk in your ways. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ, and he does not condemn us. He is the one who offers mercy, grace, and forgiveness. Brothers and sisters in Christ, know that we are forgiven. Our scripture reading for today comes to us from the 18th chapter of the book of Genesis, the first 15 verses. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf tender and good and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and grown old, and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh, yes, you did laugh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These last months of pandemic on Friday or Saturday... Jenny and I have traveled to more remote areas in the county and in this area of the state to find places where we can walk with plenty of physical distancing between us and others, uh, even more remote than the usual places that you go to hike. And in the last two or three weeks, I remember two specific occasions on our way home in the afternoon when we were driving slowly down a winding country road, and there up on a little hill sat um, a couple on their porch. This is two different occasions, the same thing happened. They were sitting on the front porch, an older couple, and uh, as we drove by, the man stood up and started waving at us waving like we were long-lost relatives that had finally found our way home. And the first time that happened, I said to Jenny, maybe we should turn around and go back so he can wave again. I have to say, when I read this story of Abraham there at the tent, when the strangers show up, it makes it sound like 
Abraham has been isolated a little too long. But the truth of the matter is, Abraham knows about the practice of hospitality. Hospitality is what his life has been all about. About 20 years ago at our congregation's adult vacation Bible school, we decided to study the whole notion of hospitality, particularly biblically. And as I began to prepare to lead that, I had to read a lot of things about hospitality and learn a lot of things I didn't know. One of the things that came to mind that I still remember this day is that if I remember correctly, the word hospitality shares the same root word as the word hospital. Makes sense. They sound almost the same. Uh, Because hospitality is about healing people who are in need of healing, sometimes whether they know it or not. So it's not so much about showing off what we have for others as it is about making them feel at home in our home. And that's what Abraham did with the three strangers. I want you to think about today the heartbeat of hospitality. Picture Abraham under the oaks of memory slipping in and out of the consciousness of an after-lunch nap, enjoying the blessed shade of the trees and perhaps what security there was in his tent. Now the visitors startle, but they do not frighten him. His reaction, shaped by more than 20 years as a sojourner, is one of reverence, maybe even worship. His urgency and generosity are driven by his guests' need, not by concern for either their worthiness or their opinion of him. Well aware that the distance between his own access to water and the next one, he realizes that the life-giving nature of water he offers is critical. There is no debate no calculation of deserving, only the recognition of a basic need. Does he know the identity of the guest? Would this impact the bounds of his hospitality? Shapeshifter that Abraham has always been, he might have figured it out by now. We don't know. But whether he understood it or not, hospitality is a lot like exercise. We may begin it because we know it's the thing we're supposed to do. Maybe even our doctor told us we needed to do more of it. But in the end, freely offering who we are and what we have to a sister or brother in need fundamentally and forever changes the way our hearts beat. And that is the heartbeat of hospitality. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we prepare ourselves to move forward in worship, we remember that gifting and offering is an important part of what we do, whether we do it the way we used to or not. I invite you to join me in a prayer of dedication. Let us pray. In this culture of competition where we are bombarded daily with the message that both value and meaning come from the twin towers of accumulation and consumption, we are grateful, O God, that Your tenacious invitation is for us to define our worth through hospitality and community. We pray this day that You will keep wafting the smell of Your fresh-baked grace and your vintage love under our noses so that we continue in the practice of generosity and expand the boundaries of neighborhood until all your children are fully and joyously included. These and all prayers we raise through Jesus Christ, the Prince of Invitation. Amen.
So many of the gospel stories tell us how Jesus gathered around the tables of so many different people. Sadly, though, not many of them tell us a lot about what was said around those tables. There are a few exceptions, and one of those exceptions was when the tables were flipped. Not the flipping of the money changers' tables in the temple, but when they were flipped in that Jesus was not the guest, but the host. This is that table. It still belongs to Him. And we do well to remind ourselves that we are all guests, all equally recipients of the lavish hospitality of His love. Let us pray. Here we are, O oh God, hungry and thirsty, if not physically, then certainly spiritually, for the ethereal loaf of and cup of your hope. For most of us, it's been far too long since we ate, drank, and remembered in this way. This day, as we pause at the threshold of the rest of our lives, we pray you would nourish us with the rich gift of your very self. We pray that you would take this loaf and cup in front of each of us and use it to raise us up to answer your call to be the church of the risen Messiah in a world full of people who so often find themselves crucified, dead, and buried by a culture of exception and exclusion. Feed us, we pray, so that we can in turn become patent and chalice for all who hunger and thirst to know their true worth. These and all prayers we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord who taught us to pray as we pray together, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. He broke the bread and gave it to them. This is the body of Christ, broken for all of us. Let us take and eat.
He poured the cup and then he shared it. The blood of Christ poured out as cup of salvation for us all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, for the gift of loaf and cup, for the gift of the life of your Son, we are ever grateful. Nourish us this day that we may go out and be your church. These and all prayers we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to sing the benediction with us.